Like for Joe Malloy, we have a very packed show. It being a Thursday night, we have John Giles. We also have Keith Andrews talking to Philly McMahon. A very interesting discussion about sport and life in general. We have Rob Daly. He's going to talk about a potential dark horse for the Champions League. And Kieran Cunningham, who's beside me, we're going to talk about 11 sports and what's going wrong there. And we also have plenty more to keep you updated on in terms of the Europa League. And here I am with Kieran Cunningham and the great Richie McCormack. Ah, you're too kind, Johnny. How, How are we, Jim? get a great. Uh, that is probably it's your, it great. It's your dissection of Ocean Cutter scene and their fans on, on Twitter.com in the last 48 hours that it's done you in there. Yeah. They had to be called out. Though. Well, in fairness, you know, you're no, there's still people live Cutter among scene. us who go to Co Ocean Cutter scene and think it's a good night out. Are there? Yeah. There are, yeah. I know an entire family that went to Ocean Cutter scene last <laughs> night. And I'm not making that up. We're on music. I must plug your show later on as well. I do. We'll save that for five to ten. We'll get the good stuff in before then, don't worry. How are you enjoying the DJ? I'm very tired. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, very are tired. you like um, Ivan Yates now? You're just flat out kind of all day long? Pretty much, yeah. Although he took a day off today to do his hair before the Christmas party. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't take days off. You, you could do what John Kelly time. used to do. You know, John Kelly would sometimes have a show and it would just be songs about chickens. <laughs> but you could have a, uh, just a show, but songs that are at you least... You sound a bit like John Kelly. Yeah, but at least there are songs that are at least... Uh, I've been told I look like him for, by some people for some reason. definitely reasons. sound That's a bit not, the not the height, they definitely don't it's have the height. It's not the ears either. But, no, but the, 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 you could have a show of songs that are 15 minutes long. So then you get a break, you could snooze, you could set the snooze alarm and just snooze for 15 minutes. Pro tip here, Kieran. It's mostly in the second hour. <laughs> Every what does, night. What You've done this? What's okay. that, Anthem? All right. Christmas Kendrick songs of my friend. I like the new Kamazi Washington album, put it that way. <laughs> Christmas is already becoming insane, though. You're like, every second text you get is like, we must have a pint for Christmas. We must have a pint. I'm like, yeah, yeah. we have like two weeks now and you have to fit in like about 40 nights out. That's not going to that, be done. Whereas opposed to that's your you during the week going, we must get a point in before Saturday. That's just your standard week. You as in like is the it, royal no, you. No, you as in yeah. Johnny Ward. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like, it's like the awards context. season as well. Like I, I was starting to get fatigued with all the awards. Like every. And you weren't at the managerial awards yesterday. No, like I, I, I went a good few years. I, I, I judged it for a couple of years in the early noughties. And I kind of had my fill of it because it it does. It starts at like twelve o'clock. Yeah, or something. and it finishes very very late. Twelve o'clock. And most people stick the stick stick it out for the duration. That it it does seem to be an annual party in both Irish sports and Irish sports media, and I'm just not fit for that anymore. So, but like it's a daily thing. Like you, you had the horse racing awards, you had athletics awards, all star awards, uh, PFAA awards, two different book awards the last couple of weeks. You have the RT awards at the weekend. Kieran, I don't want to be in danger of speaking for Joe Public here, yeah. but you're going to get no sympathy for them going to a daily award yeah, show. I'm not going to them. No, I, mean, I don't. Go, I hardly well, go to any of them. Yes, the booth is free. But I mean, I mean do, do people not get tired? Like, I would say some of those, after a while, Joe Schmidt, when he gets his 27th award, will be going, oh, for God's <laughs> in sake. In fairness to Joe, can I Joe watch, actually turns uh, up. Can I know, not he, watch Hums, under, Hums the under the Hammer or something for the day? Or? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to Christmas further. What does Christmas mean in a sporting event because or in a sporting context? Because I'm thinking... Racing, it's for me, would be like, you know, it's, I think, maybe 13 race meetings on the 26th. Wow. I say the 26th, not Stevens' Day or Boxing Day, just because I just want to be down the middle on that. Yeah. Okay. Why? Because <laughs> n I've never been a fan of Boxing Day, and I'm no longer really a believer, so Stevens' Day doesn't really exist for me But anymore. it can still be, like, th what the day is called. It's the 26th. So, you st you, so as you're a non-believer, you also call Christmas Day the 25th? Um... That's a very good point, Richie. But I, 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 you know, I have a lot of northern friends, so I try to be right down the middle. In yeah, any but event. it's funny. It, it is a northern thing. Like even Donegal, uh, like the nine county Ulster, it's they true, actually, calling yeah. it Boxing Day. Yeah. Like I always heard Boxing Day growing up, and I only ever heard it was an issue when I came to Dublin. That people say, "Oh, why are you saying Boxing Day?" And that's a British thing. But it was a natural thing for people. Who always said Boxing Day where we were. Yeah, when we because when we were kids, we actually did like chase the rain on Stevens' Day, and we oh, really, uh, yeah. tried to get a few bob and. The, the key was to, to divide up your party and go to the same house twice, so you'd, you'd get money from the same people twice. Yeah. Like you're, uh, you're obviously a racing aficionado. Do you enjoy the Christmas festival? Because it's, uh, you've obviously top level racing, but you, it's very much a social thing. Like I would always look at the photos and you see the edges there and uh, the Glenda Gilsons and these yeah. people turn up and it's, well, it's a bit of glitz and glamour. Like it's kind of like the Galway Racing Festival in that. Like, there actually is good racing on, but racing is only an aside to kind of the actual social aspect to it. But like, I find Christmas Day extremely boring and I'm just like buzzing to get to the 26th because the racing starts. Steams' Day slash Boxing Day, yeah. um, Derry, London, Derry, and all that. But anyway, so I find, and then Christmas just passed you by because I would yeah. have like, 
I would probably come home Christmas Eve and I'm back up in Dublin early on on the 26th, the morning of the 26th. So it's just, you you, you really have no time to spend with your family. Yeah. But um, at the same time, the racing is so good that yeah. you're kind of buzzing for it. And I, what's what's mad is that in, in, in America, they actually play American football on Christmas Day, which yeah, I yeah. always thought was... Well, their, their Christmas is slightly skewed in that they do. Yeah. They f- front end a lot of stuff for Christmas Eve and then on Christmas Day, they really only have the presents open in the morning and then they do nothing. And this is a complete aside, but in a similar vein, the, like, the two biggest days for professional wrestling in the United States back in the like 60s, 70s and 80s used to be Thanksgiving and Christmas Day. And the promoter's idea was, sure, once people have opened their presents, what else have they got to do all day? Mm. And they used to bring people in in their absolute droves to shows yeah. on Christmas Day. But I think day. there's a great appetite for doing stuff on Christmas Day. Like You see stuff like the Gold Mile, yeah. which is everywhere. And so, uh, I would say thousands of people do that now because park running, etc., is such, mm. such a, a craze the last few years. But Is uh, it a surprise that actual sporting events haven't crept into being played on Christmas Day either here or I, I think it could happen. I think it could more, more chance in the UK because, like, I lived in London for a few years, and the pubs in London, the pubs in the UK open on Christmas yeah. Day. Like, I remember that was something I found. Like back at home, they used to open for a couple of hours around lunchtime on Christmas Day, but I think it was completely illegal, and that they clamped down on that the last few years. Should they be open Christmas Day? <sighs> Well, I would have no issue with it, to be honest. The people have to work if it is. You yeah. Know. yeah. I but sure loves to work. I've often worked Christmas Day, to be honest. If you're in newspapers, you often work yeah. Christmas Day. So. Michael O'Leary, um, I remember reading a book on him, and he opened a shop, I think it was somewhere around the North Circle Road when he's in his early entrepreneurial days. He opened a shop on Christmas Day and basically sold batteries for three times their value, and he went home thinking, this is great. And look at him now. I was just going to ask, was he selling batteries that day? And that's exactly what and that's Batteries exactly what and... I've heard stories about batteries Richard Branson and bread. About milk, that, like yeah. that as well. The stories about Richard Branson... Ah, Branson's milk! Like that. Oh. They're always put forward the stories about, this shows what has set these guys apart, how great they are. And I always think, God, they're just... You know, they're not people I would have liked to know okay, in well, school sp- that are of, selling their batteries. Speaking yeah. of greatness, I love a good montage, and this is a this is a good montage. I haven't actually heard it, but it must be a good montage because it involves um, possibly the sport that most of us look forward <laughs> to. Maybe not me, but I do like getting a bit in uh, at Christmas. What sport could that be? Everybody cheering him on, hoping and sozing. I thought, where's the fact of them stage? Did he? Yes. He, he, well, I think he thinks you did it. Yes. You put your finger up last, though. We must know there. Double 12! I thought he had shit, and I went, that's dirty. Yes! Yes! It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. Okay, I, I have to be honest, I hadn't heard about this <laughs> somehow until today. The farting? It's essentially the fart it's of the story dark. It's a story here. Yeah, yeah. Like, fart, uh, fart gate is bigger than... Uh, the only story that... Is the fake dead man, dead, dead playing Bally Brack, is the only story that rivals it is the story of the year. Yeah, his month's mind. His month's <laughs> mind was true. Where'd you go? <laughs> I was like, oh, Irish joke is that? Like, the month's mind. I remember... It's like he's he's gone a month. We better remember him. But tell Can't us about Fartgate, lads, because um, this just tees up. Obviously, the World Championship is starting tonight. Yeah. We we do we do get a bit of the old darts in, whether you liked or not at Christmas. Even if you're just flicking, I guess there's a lot of hints that you don't like the darts, and I really I know, don't I, I quite, your tone. I went I went to the darts once in Dublin, and I made the fatal decision like not to drink, and I realised that this yeah. is like you really do have to. It's like oxygen; you have to have it for never a go to like it. this. Mm. Never go to it. Yeah, because it was, it's it just it's, it's just a drinking competition. Then yeah. and you don't pay attention to the actual athletes on stage. And these athletes, one of them allegedly farted the other day. What was this about? There was basically Gary Anderson uh, was playing. I can't remember what tournament it was in, but. Um, um, I think it might have been the... I know, I can't remember. But either way, there was a question of whether he or his opponent had parted <laughs> on stage in an effort to distract the other one. And Gary Anderson was asked about this in his interview afterwards and suggested, as you heard there in the montage, that the reporter may insert uh, a finger in a certain orifice to check whether or not there had been gas passed. And... Apparently he was denying all issues of farting. But it's amazing it took this long for a fart scandal to break out in dart. In any sport. Really yeah, but, uh, but, but when you look at a lot of the athletes in darts, um, you would take they're a wild guess man. that uh, their changing. diets are pretty uh, conducive to yeah, Imagine if they were sponsored by a particular beer, like they'd be kind of like pulling out like Nike and these disgraced sports fans. Like, well, more beer does not make you yeah. fart. Do you remember, you wouldn't remember uh, before your time, probably Bill Werbenick, which you might have heard of him, the snooker player, but he used to drink 18 pints during a snooker match. How on the average. Hell you could actually... Like, like, surely there was a fart gate incident with Bill. And they probably just pints. suppressed it for the betterment of the sport. Yeah. Given how close quarters a lot of the audience is in snooker, surely there'd be a, you know, like a fart gate in around then. What intrigues me is, well, let's say, like, you know, DNA evidence is 
you know, improved so much over the years. Um, if there's anyone out there who can actually, you know, tell us categorically that you would be able to figure out which of them farted, um, you know, it was it happened at such a time, and we can prove once and for all because both are denying it, aren't they? Yeah, there was both. There was denial on both parts that there have been. It's it's a it's a tricky gas. one. We've all been there when you're in the pub, and maybe you've had, you know, it's been a, a lively event. Probably drinking the black stuff for a while. And you're like, oh, God, I didn't mean that to happen. Can I just say, as, an ex- as somebody who has an experience of actually being out in social areas, but in a working capacity, like DJing places, yeah. people aren't shy about farting on nights out anymore. Yeah, but Especially if you're in a bra. Yeah. That's Jesus different, though. They can Christ. get away with that, though. Like. Yeah, but, it's but, like, but, but why? But I, I, I remember, uh, I was a barman years ago. One of the, the most remarkable things about when the smoking ban went is you suddenly realised what the smoke yeah. used to mask... Yeah, and you suddenly were, were inhaling Guinness farts every night, and you go, "This is great." Good times. I, I went to I went to Vienna last week, and everyone was smoking in the bars over there. I couldn't believe it. It was just so weird to me. And I hardest thing to get used to again. Yeah, and I, I obviously I didn't enjoy it at all. And I actually I would be a social smoker, um, a social smoker such that I was once in the dentist, and the dentist is like, "Do you smoke?" And I was like, "Oh no, no, just socially." And she's like, "Oh, well, do you socialize a lot?" I was like, well, <laughs> I don't want the, you know, I don't want the psychiatry here. I just want to get my teeth cleaned. But um, it was really strange because I, I like the going out. You do come here often, is it? I, I, like, <laughs> I like going outside paradoxically for fresh air while I'm having a cigarette. And actually, as a non-smoker, it was a horrible experience if you're in the pubs in Vienna. But pretty much everyone seemed to be smoking. Mm. Well, a lot of Eastern Europe as well. I think virtually everywhere I've gone and Ireland trips, etc. They seem to smoke in bars still. And yeah, it's very striking. You you really notice it now. When and, and even the hotel room, as soon as you go in, you can smell smoke mm. compared to Western Europe. Most of Western Europe now. So. Well, it'll be a, a theme for the darts, but we should have some news as well from today, Richie, do we? Yeah, we do indeed. We'll kick off with uh, Matters Europa League because Rangers are continuing their final push for a place in the knockout phase of Europe's second-tier competition. They kicked off at 5.55 away to Rapid Vienna. They need a win tonight, do Rangers, uh, to secure that place in the last 32. Uh, they're deep into the second half now tonight in that Group uh, G encounters. He tries to bring up the score because the live stream's gone dead in his computer. And it is actually still Rapid Vienna nil, Rangers nil. Elsewhere in Group G, Villarreal leading Spartak Moscow by two goals to nil. Did you see the documentary on Stephen Gerrard on Amazon Prime? I have not watched chance? it yet. No. Is it fluff? No, it's not. It's, it's quite interesting, but he's a miserable who. Jesus. All the best players are, though. He's so downbeat. He's unbelievable. Like, he's... I think he's very much true to himself, like because I, I've he- heard this said about him, and I thought that can't be true. Like he ha- he was very talented. He did win Champions League. He played played a hundred times for England, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like a decent career, but he's just. Did Stephen Gerrard uh, play that often for England? Yeah. I, I would I'm have sure to say he's. Didn't he? I think uh, we're close on it. You can check it there. I, w- I would say if he played that often for England, his, his output for. The uh, the amount of times he played, his actual product was pretty poor at the end of the day, and that's one indictment I maybe would have of his career. This, obviously, they always said himself and Lampard couldn't play together. Maybe they played together a bit too often, but he didn't mm-hmm. have a great career for England. By he any had means. a better sense of himself than I think was actually apparent. In yeah, well, he, he was a player for great interventions, yeah, rather than being a great player. Like he would do, like you saw it repeated this week, the Olympiacos goal. Or the goal against West Ham in the FA Cup final, Both or goals against West Ham in the Cup yeah, final. Champions League final, the header, and then winning the penalty. That he would come up with moments like that, but like uh, he, what he wanted to be was a Roy Keane, and he never was that. That's, like, that's he exactly. Roy Keane. And he, he his idol was Roy Keane, and in many ways they were really different players. Yeah, completely different. Yeah, like the the best year he had was when uh, uh, Benitez shunted him out to the wing out of the road basically mm. and let Mascherano and Alonso get on with it so in the middle so and then he, he tallied well he worked well with Torres that season came close enough to win in the league I think Rangers brought something like 12,000 fans to Vienna yeah it's a decent noise they're making over there as well but as I say just past the air mark there and still scores should mention as well before we get on to the Celtic team news that the news round is brought to you this evening with Screwfix.ie championing the trade with a choice of over 20,000 quality trade products as I mentioned Celtic needing a draw from their final group B game that's at Salzburg at Parkhead this evening their Austrian opponents have already secured top spot in the group after winning all five of the games so far Celtic line out with Craig Gordon in goal a back four Mikhail Lustig Jozo Semenovic Filip Benkovic and Kieran Tierney Callum McGregor 
and Tom Ruggett hold the midfield with Ryan Christie, James Forrest and so- Scott Sinclair in behind Odson Edward. That kicks off at eight, as does Arsenal's groupie dead rubber with the Azeri champions of Carabag. It is Cesc Fabregas who is captaining a largely second string Chelsea side for their final group L game. That is in Hungary and is away to Vidi. Past the hour mark in that one as well. It's actually Vidi 2, Chelsea 1. William had given Chelsea the lead on the half hour mark. Just two minutes later, an own goal from Ethan Ampadu level matters and Loic Nego has just put in Vidi uh, one or two one ahead pardon me in the past few moments uh, elsewhere tonight Celtics Lee Griffiths getting back to them says he'll return to football a better and a stronger person the striker is taking time out from the game to deal with off field issues including some relating to his mental health in a statement on the Celtic website Griffiths thanked everyone at the club the fans and everyone who has sent him messages of support since the news became public and speaking ahead of tonight's game Brendan Rodgers says Griffiths will be given the club's full support yeah, it's been ongoing uh, in, my, in my time here with Lee. Uh, I'm very close with him. We've got a, a strong relationship and he, he's, he's had a number of issues uh, around uh, around outside of the, the football environment. So um, so I think for us it's... And, and thankfully for him, nowadays the issues that can come across uh, young players and, and young people in general there's great support out there and professional support and it's no longer a weakness now to talk. It's uh, it's something there where we can help people uh, and that's something that we, we aim to do with him and he's all our support as his staff and these players and the supporters to help him get, uh, get back to a good place. There you go, Brendan Rodgers speaking about Lee Griffiths taking time away from the game. It's, Positive it's, to hear everybody talking and talking yeah, so awfully about it. It's mm. obviously... Um, it's not nice to kind of see stories like this. You see the human frailty of of the individual, um, but uh, I don't know. I think without obviously knowing Brendan Rodgers, I think he's exactly the type of manager you'd probably want if you were in a situation where you didn't need to take time off. Yeah, yeah. Like it's interesting people within the game how much time they have for Rodgers. Like I actually heard the other day um, Jimmy Guinness talking about him and how good he was and the advice he gave him and uh, Michael Calvin's book Living on the Volcano which interviews a huge amount of managers across the four divisions in England it's striking how many of them uh, talk of the help Rogers gave them like if they ever were out of work or uh, he would ring up and say do you want to come and watch us train or whatever you know he was always looking to offer advice and help people out like he seems like a decent guy and he seems like he does seem like the kind of manager the Griffiths need needed now like Griffiths seems to have had quite a chaotic personal life and a lot of issues going on and it probably uh, stepping away from the limelight might help him. Yeah. So a uh, tweet from a Rangers uh, supporters club wishing him all the best in his recovery today which was quite nice as well. Yeah, it's good to see. Uh, elsewhere today, Paddy Jackson's back in the Perpignan side that faces Connacht in the Challenge Cup. That's tomorrow night. It'll be the first time the former Ireland out half has faced an Irish province since his departure from Ulster earlier this year. Jackson's return is one of 13 changes made from last week's 22-10 defeat at the sports ground. Connacht themselves head to the south of France without Bundy Aki, who's returned to New Zealand to get married. Congratulations to him. David Horowitz, <coughs> pardon me, partners academy graduate Kieran Joyce in midfield while another ca- academy player Ian Connor Fitzgerald starts at out half tomorrow night uh, sticking with European rugby Ulster are unchanged for tomorrow's Heineken Champions Cup meeting with the Scarlets at Kingspan Stadium Captain Rory Best will become the province's all time caps holder in Europe tomorrow night while back row Jordy Murphy says they need to improve upon last week's bonus point victory to secure another much needed win tomorrow night great to be able to come back to the Kingspan now and do it in front of our own home fans so uh, look we'll, we'll definitely be going out there to, to get the best result possible and put ourselves in a good position in this group so we'll have to bring our A game and even step it up from last week definitely to, to beat Scarlet. There you go, Jordy Murphy there speaking ahead of tomorrow night. Uh, Liverpool, meanwhile, facing a genuine defensive crisis heading into the festive season. Trent Alexander-Arnold expect to miss Sunday's Premier League meeting with Manchester United, a game you can hear live and off the ball following scans on the foot injury suffered in Tuesday night's win over Napoli at Anfield. Liverpool are already without Joe Gomez and Joel Matip ahead of Sunday's game at Anfield. Something I wanted to very briefly up to there, you mentioned the Europa League tonight. You're a League of Ireland fan. What do you make of this new third-tier competition? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's actually the, exactly well, you see, what you see, the thing about it is, it's like just from a general footballing point of view, like for, forget about who supports who, like it's very hard to muster any kind of enthusiasm for the, for Europa, the Europa League. League. But I don't think that's necessarily because of the caliber of the competition. I think it's just the fact that it's another night. <laughs> 
of European football and there's like a scatter of sides played across it as well that it's like and it, I think it's just general fatigue yeah, there's it's too not much football there is there's there's way too much, much football, football you know with the Nations League as well now as well you know there's there's just um, you can't possibly you can't be expected possibly to care that or, much. yeah get interested in everything yeah. you can't be energised by you everything you remember when we were young the, you know the actual joy of being able to watch a football game a so football yeah, match yeah. a football game and then obviously when you went to a game or at least when I went to a game I thought this is a new experience game but Kieran and I are going to talk to us about this later about the streaming now like theoretically you could pretty much watch football probably three or four times a day every day yeah. easily now and and a lot of those are just domestic games and I think saturation is going to become a big, big issue. Yeah, well, you look at the the Virgin Media thing, you know, and uh, uh, they show in all the Europa yeah. League games, don't they, and yeah. all the Champions League games. Like, it's just... Um, What's the... App like, I don't, <clears throat> I don't, like so, content is clearly the appetite or the, the, the reason for everything on, yeah. on these things. I just don't see, from a viewer's perspective, what the gain is. Like, if, if you want to watch Besiktas and Malmo tonight... By all means, fair play to you go and watch it and see possibly another Loris Carrius Howler. But beyond that, mm. I, just, I don't know. Maybe I mean, I'm in the wrong seat to be given out about too much sport <laughs> on TV. But We're going to talk to about uh, Dortmund as well a bit later on um, in the football show on the fact that they're getting nearly 80,000 at every game at home. Mm. And their ticket prices are like from 17 euros. Have you ever been? No, I've, to go. I've been to German games, games yeah. never been to Dortmund. Uh, I'd say it's a great experience. Which German games did you go to? I went to Hertha Berlin and Pats. So that was, yeah, I haven't been to a Bundesliga. In a half empty Olympia Stadium. Yeah, so I haven't gotten, I, I'd say my best, I want to really see Pauk Salon, Thessalonica. I want to see them play. I think their fans are amazing. But I've been to Galatasaray, um, albeit for a pre-season game. Mm. But the atmosphere there was out of this world, I have to say. Um, yeah. It's because they do ticketing right, essentially, in, in, yeah. in countries, especially like and Germany. And the Turks are. But, but it's interesting, when, uh, when, when, um, when Klopp was going to Liverpool, mm. his sons had been to Anfield. Beforehand, and they said the atmosphere is going to be is, is something else. You know, it's like Dortmund. What do you call that wall? The what do you yellow call wall. The yellow wall. It's like the yellow wall. Apparently, they've like twenty eight thousand people yeah, in that alone. Or yeah, something, yeah, but apparently, Klopp was completely underwhelmed by Anfield then when he got there, and he said, "Really, like this that's, Dortmund that's, that's is mad." Yeah, like, you know, Premier League atmosphere is pretty. <coughs> is no, pretty yeah, pantry, yeah, like, like no, like uh, like you saw the the Napoli the other night as a proper atmosphere, but most games at Anfield are pretty. Flat. Absolutely. All Cedar Stadia has played a huge factor in that. And, and this, this was like Hillsborough was such a catastrophe. But I do, I do believe it's regrettable that there isn't safe standing like there is in Germany in, in, in English there is, football. There is a slow creep, obviously. Yeah. Like Celtic mm. have uh, that corner in Parkhead that has been given over to safe standing. And fingers crossed from their point of view, they'll be able to extend that a little bit. But the difference it makes, like you can see the difference it makes in Germany. You look at any oh. Bundesliga game, like no matter who, like bottom of the table, middle of, mid table, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, whoever. Like behind each goal is a sea of people all standing safely, all contributing much more of an atmosphere than you would get I, at any Premier League game. I think if you're if you're standing at a game, you're participating. If you're sitting, you're spectating, basically. And I think that's the difference. Richie, I, I, I love League of Ireland stories from you. Can we have one before the show is out? You we can, have to wish indeed. a fond farewell. We do indeed. Although it's more of an adieu than a farewell. Raf Kataro has played his final game. The Tubber Curry Sander Tornado. Rovers. He is indeed. The 37-year-old now. He spent 17 seasons at the showgrounds between his two spells there. He had brief sojourns at Galway and Bohemians, of course. Kataro helps Sligo win the FAI Cup in two seasons either side of their 2012 Premier Division triumph. He has indicated in his parting statements to the Sligo fans that he will continue playing after leaving the Bitter Red. A hell of a player in his day. He was, and I think uh, he's a great example to us all that you can basically uh, just keep going if you keep yourself fit. And uh, let's see where he actually ends up. After the break, we have none other than Johnny Giles. Off the ball on News Talk. Thanks to Screwfix.ie. Championing the trade with a choice of over 20,000 quality trade products. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. With Jess Kelly. Coming up this week, we have the ultimate gaming gift guide. If you're considering buying a game for a loved one or planning to ask Santa for a console, we'll talk through what you need to know. We'll review some of the biggest titles of the year and tell you where you'll find the best value. Tech Talk. 